Destination Freedom. Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic traditions of the Negro people, is brought to you by station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own Destination Freedom. Among the nations of the Western Hemisphere, the first to end the barbaric system of slavery was the Caribbean colony of Haiti. Among the slave leaders whose militant rebellion helped bring about the change, one stands apart. We tell his story in the second and final chapter of Black Hamlet, the story of King Henri Christophe of Santo Domingo. They stay in Haiti atop the tall mountain 3,000 feet above the sea. The ghost of King Henri Christophe walks again in the lonely halls of his citadel, like a distraught Hamlet, retracing the steps that took him from the stables of Santo Domingo to the top of the mountains as king, retracing his steps to find which mistake brought him death, which step in the long climb to the kingdom was unwise, miscalculated, misjudged. And, O oh King, do you remember the step you took from your garret room in the hotel stable to the gaudy, rich billiard rooms where a nobleman struck you and where the innkeeper called Toussaint the slave doctor? And thereafter, his prescription kept echoing in your mind? Henri, for slaves I prescribe only one medicine, freedom. When you hear drums roll in the mountains, join the rebellion. And, O oh King, you kept to your garret behind the stables, while in the valleys and on every plantation the elements of the rebellion were collecting underground like a huge hurricane. You kept contact with Toussaint, the leader, and at night listened for the drums from the mountains, for the knock on your garret door. And the knock came that chilled your hot blood. Was this the revolution? Open in the name of the governor! Open! Or had you been discovered? Innkeeper! Is this Henry Christophe? Yes, Captain, but he was in his room all night. He had nothing to do with last night's uprising. His name was given to us as a slave who could profit from this morning's lesson. Lesson? The rebel leaders we caught last night will be executed in the town square. The governor's declared a holiday. It's a sight for every slave. Henry, step outside. <laughs> into the line with other slaves and marched through the village as the captain stopped at the carcel and picked up Toussaint, Desalines, and a dozen others. And the captain said to the custodian, Is this the slave named Desalines? Yes, but he's harmless, captain. He's no rebel. Toussaint, since you're the senior slave, you take the front rank. Your old eyes will have no excuse for not learning your lesson. Work! <laughs> And, O oh King, you recall the step you took behind the small, dirty body of Toussaint. As you marched towards the open marketplace where crowds of planters, noblemen, and their ladies waited for the show, hysterical at the rumors of slave rebellion, and where a masked executioner grimly stood by a scaffold in a rack. And the captain said, Boys, halt! Stand here! In the name of the governor of Santo Domingo, two slaves, Cape and Cardo, having conspired to overthrow the government by force and violence, shall be sentenced to have arms, legs, and spines broken on the rack with their faces towards heaven in the name of justice, and so that all slaves might know the penalty for insurrection. You, Henri, Desaline, Toussaint, are you watching? You who take the profits out of the poor planters' mouths with your preachings, watch! Look up! Look up at the scaffold! 
Your eyes watched the scaffold and saw the executioner lace Cardo and Cape to the rack and carry out his orders to the letter. <laughs> and you kept your eyes on them until the holiday crowd pulled themselves from the square and the sun set on the spike wearing the heads of Cape and Cardo. And the captain snapped. Now go home to your masters. And remember the execution you watched today might have been your own. And you waited until the captain was gone. And Desalines said, If I had the ribs of the slave who told him to bring me into the square to see this, I'd crack them. <laughs> I'm not so strong as you, Desalines. All I have at home is one ancient pistol with one bullet. But I'd hunt up the informer. My and... friend, you can stop your search. But, uh, what? I told him to bring you both. Totally you did that? that? You easy now. The guards still look this way. But why did you tell me? As a doctor, I prescribe what sick men you need. You caused them to bring me here? To see if you could watch without a change of face or of heart. What are you talking about? Those who watch and still are ready to try rebellion shall be among the leaders. You, Christoph Desalines. Do you want freedom enough to try for it? Even knowing that tomorrow, you may cause another governor's holiday. I'll follow any slave who strikes for freedom. I'm with the rebels, no matter what. Good. Freedom won't be won overnight. There'll be years of organizing, training, years of small victories, and no victory. Indecision among our own forces, spies and traitors. But the thirst for liberty is unquenchable. This morning's expedition by the masters seals their doom and confirms our destination. Freedom. And, O oh King, you returned to the inn and recorded the planter's anxiety and suspicion. You waited year after year while the slave hurricane was collecting. You met a slim, dark girl to whom you whispered your destiny. When the drums roll in the mountain, Toussaint and his leaders will come for me. Do you understand, Maria? I understand very well. And where will I be when they come for you? Beside me, as my wife. And you took Maria as your wife. Soon the drums began to roll over the mountain. Inside your room, you waited for a visit from the rebels. Or again from the captain. Fearfully, you reached for your pistol and were ready to put it to your own head. Maurice! Open the door, Maurice. There, there. You see? It's too sad. Yeah. Too sad. Waiting is over. Andre, we've taken this section of the island. Oh. I, I didn't even know you were in the hotel. We move quietly. This is an outpost now. Now it's time to use some of the military art you and Dessaline learned of the American Revolution. Hey, Dessaline. I'm ready. Dessaline is my second in command. He will command the forces in the northern section. Christoph, as we planned. Yes. I shall command the people under me with discipline. And with kindness. Oh, no. Huh? In my army, it is you whom the people will command, not you who will command the people. I... I understand. Then understand this. On this island, we have empire armies of the English, French, and Spanish, all waiting to subdue the slaves and reap the profit from their work. So... We will burn their plantations, set flames to their crops, retreat and reassemble and strike and build and build until peace is secure and the land is in the hands of those who cultivate it, the slaves. We shall have freedom from tyrants. And you accepted your responsibility with courage, O King. With your section of the slave army, you set fire to plantation warehouses. 
on the embattled island, the whole horizon was a sheet of fire. Great orange tongues reached above the earth and lapped at the stars. Flames climbed against the wall of night as if the vines of slavery reached into planters' homes and into barracks of troops and to subdue your army. And with Dessaline and Poussin, the ragged slave regiments broke the backs of the Spanish troops, the English troops, and finally Napoleon's troops. And when a beaten French general asked for a conference, you and Dessaline came down from the mountains to confer with Napoleon's general. At night, when you went to your home, you were restless. You tried to sleep, but thought of that morning in the marketplace. You were standing before the executioner, and all around you the planters were jeering and shouting and knocking on the guillotine for your head. Suddenly you realized the knocking came from your door and not the guillotine, and you leaped from your bed and reached for your pistol and a single bullet before you called out, Oh, who's there? Go to the What do you want? Oh, you're too soft already. Uh, where's your man? He's captured. Huh? He, he's, he's been... He's been out with him. By whom? The French. You lie. There's a truth on. I, I was with him when soldiers surrounded him. I got away, but they got to say... But you gathered your men that night and set fire to the fort and retreated with Desaline to the hills, regrouped and fought until you stood with Desaline atop this mighty mountain and looked down into the sea and saw the last of the French fleet creeping away. Santo Domingo was free. Now that we have driven the Empire hunters into the ocean, Henri, we shall reconstruct Santo Domingo in the image of a state free from tyrants and profiteers. And according to the wishes of Toussaint, I shall assume command. Did you say something, General Christophe? I, um, I thought that in accordance with the Constitution, there shall be an election. Does anyone doubt that there's a need for a governor general? Good. I shall accept this position which has been tendered me. Meanwhile, General Christophe will be my second in command. You will immediately take steps to restore the northern section of Haiti. There will be other steps to be taken later which I will inform you of as soon as practicable. And you took the steps and hid your ambition from all but Maria, who watched you pace the floor night after night as the years of slow reconstruction went on. You're still dissatisfied with the way Dessaline runs the country, aren't you, Henri? He's becoming a tyrant. Even his own troops hate him. And besides... He keeps you to the northern provinces only. It's not that that I mind, but there's so much that could be done. So much in so little time. And Dessaline is in the way. I wouldn't put it that way. It's just that Dessaline assumes title. Now he calls himself emperor. The fool. Set himself up as an emperor before people who've learned to hate the sound of the title. Would you do better? Of course. They've given him too much power. What power the people give, Henri, the people can take away. And, O oh King, you tried to sleep, but again there was the awful dream of the marketplace and the executioner, and dawn again found you pacing the floor. And someone, perhaps an agent of Dessaline, was hammering on the door. Had he become aware of your ambition? Had he sent an executioner? You picked up your pistol before you threw open the door. What do you want? I have a message for you from the minister. Give it to me. You snatched the letter, and it spoke of your inner thoughts. Dear General Christophe, a terrible thing has occurred in the province of Saint Souci. Our Emperor Dessaline was set upon by traitors among his own troops and assassinated. We ask you to come immediately to a public conference in the capital. The ministers of His Majesty's cabinet have gathered to petition you to accept the position of chief executive of the state. King, you stood there while soldiers and farmers, men and women, cheered, and you had an eerie sense of your own destiny. A slow flow of power filled your veins. You made a three-hour climb up the highest mountain to survey your domain. When you reached the top, you ordered your chief engineer to build the mightiest castle fortress in the world. When your minister of finance declared there was no currency, you said, The peasants grow and drink coffee. 
Yes, coffee is important to them. Coffee is important to the world. We will tax each person, say, 20 pounds of coffee each year. We will then bring their coffee to the treasury. Why, why, yes. We can trade coffee to England in return for gold. With gold, we begin our currency. Then I will have my castle. We will take steps accordingly. And you thought of declaring yourself king only to hasten progress. Your ministers agreed, and your troops were still loyal. But Maria, who watched your restless pacing, had my full concern. You are walking in the footsteps of Dessalines. Don't compare me with Dessalines. This is just a temporary measure. The people have nothing to fear with me as king. <laughs> And you hold firm and watched how the foreign powers eyed the progress of your state. And to forestall their aggression, you invited their military chiefs to inspect your army. Your minister of war gave his opinion. That would be suicide. They only want to gauge our strength. And since our army is so limited... Our army can... is limited. But our ideas are not. What do you mean? Invite the attaches of every country that covets our trade, our land and stage a parade of all our armed forces. But we have only a I few... I shall supervise that parade, personally. Very well, Your Highness. And you invited the military chiefs of three countries, and you sat with them as they watched your soldiers parade by the palace. It is a very colorful armor you have, King Christoph, even though perhaps it is small, eh? Ah, uh, Excellency, they do march well, and I must report. I say, are these the main body of troops we're seeing now, Your Highness? Uh, gentlemen, the main body is the infantry, and they're at the end of the parade. Sit back, be comfortable. <laughs> And by late afternoon, the troops were still passing, and your guests' eyes began to widen. By Jove, I say, Your Highness, does everyone in Haiti belong to the army? Oh, no, no. You see just a small part of our people represented in the army. Would you gentlemen like to have dinner out here? The soldiers haven't half finished with the parade. <laughs> And when twilight fell, the soldiers still came, new regiment after regiment. The guests looked fearfully at each other and crept away to report on your unusual army. But you did not tell them that they had seen only a handful of troops trained to change quickly into different uniforms and to pass the platform again and again. But still, O oh King, you did not feel secure. You tightened the discipline of your army and gained more power, and perhaps you became intolerant in your impatience, or you slept less to avoid the recurring dream of the executioner in the marketplace and paced the floor again nightly as Maria called you. Tyrant. Maria. Despot. That's what the people are calling you. Oh, people. Can't at least you understand what I'm trying to do? To build a nation with iron discipline. Dessalines discipline. Uh, Dessalines troops lost admiration for you. Lost confidence in him. But mine yes. was... The people are losing confidence in you. As long as the troops hold up, the people will stay in line. I will take steps to see to that. And you took firm steps to secure your control. You consulted less with your ministers and more with your own ambition until the time came when you could not afford to allow the slightest infraction of discipline. As that sunny morning when you stood high in your mountain castle, swept the valleys below with your telescope and noticed a workman sleeping. Captain! Your Highness? Look through this glass. You see that mason sleeping instead of working on the docks? Why, yes, I see him. Shall I send down an orderly, sir? No, 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 no. I've warned him once that the docks must be built quickly. I'll send down my own orderly. Your Highness? We raise that cannon so I can sight it. Your Highness. Higher. Now, a little to the left. There. Now, light the fuse. Your Highness. I have a friend. I'll do it. Your Highness, please. 
And your aim was true. It demolished the sleeper. Was that the first wrong step? Was it that? Or could it have been your ignoring the court doctor's warning? Your Highness, I... I've got to report. Then report and start gibbering. Uh, uh, unless you rest and give up state duties, your, your blood pressure, your, your constitution, uh, conditions might lead to an... Uh, I'm afraid, sir. I am not. Get out of my sight. But you were afraid as you toured your kingdom ahead of your troops and pushed your plans faster and harder and put down rebellion and radicals with an iron fist and walked the floor nightly. Again one night, the dream of the marketplace came back. The executioner's mask dropped and you almost saw his face. You jumped from your bed with fear and trembling at a knock at your door. You reached again for the pistol before you threw it open. What do you want? It was your war minister. Your Highness, the province is in the south. Uh, I'll in a boat. No. No, I don't believe it. I You're called, lying. I called out the troops, but they're unwilling to follow me. They'll follow me. Get my horse ready. I'll let the guards. We'll put them down as the dogs they are. We'll teach them to respect authority. I will not tolerate rebellion. <laughs> your Highness. <laughs> It was then the thunder struck you, O King. Then rage and fury and frustration and fear split your nerves. When it rolled away, you were lying on your back inside the castle. You faintly could hear the doctor. He's opening his eyes. He's regaining consciousness now. Now, madam, I, I think your husband can speak to us. Oh, how long have I been here? Don't worry. Lie back on it. No, no. Get me up. I've got to stop the rebellion. Shall, shall I tell him, Doctor? Tell me what? Your Highness, you've been in bed a week. The rebels have taken over the valley. Taken it? What have my troops been doing? Well, I'm unfamiliar with military matters, but I... Your, your troops, sire, have been waiting to see whether you... Sire, uh, you have had a stroke. I warned you. Stroke? Oh. Your legs and thighs are paralyzed. You recall the way your hands dug into your legs to awaken them. Week after week as you lay there and you watched through the windows and saw your troops waiting for either the rebels or you to come and lead them. One evening you called. Minister! Minister! Your, your Highness. Tell the groom to bring out my horse. Tell my troops I'm coming down to lead them. But, oh, but you, oh, doctor, help. You will all do as I say. But, your highness, you can't walk. I've told you, you can't walk. I'm going to lead my men. They won't follow you. They will if they see I still have my strength. I am not paralyzed. And I can walk to my horse, mount it, and ride down the mountain. They'll follow if I lead. And was this the right step, O King? Pulling yourself into your uniform and standing erect, although pain preyed on every part of your body. Standing erect and taking a step. And another. And another. And you took the fierce step down through the corridor and out on the parade ground where your horse stood saddled and waiting all around the officers and troops stood ready and waiting and watching to see if you still had power to command through the pain that burned your nerves and punished your heart you reached the horse and heard them cheer <laughs> Into the mud. 
and the thunder rolled again. You were again enveloped in the darkness, in the empty darkness with only the tortured dream of the marketplace. The executioner standing over you. Are you worried now that in your dreams you could see the executioner's face? His mask had fallen and he was not a white planter but a black peasant. And when the cloud rolled away, your eyes opened. You were alone in the citadel with Maria. How, how long have I been lying here this time? Only a few hours. Well, where, where is everyone? My ministers, doctors, the troops. With the rebels. Can't I find why can't they, your highness? Ungrateful dog. Didn't I build them a state, a nation? Didn't I save them from aggressors? Didn't I free them? You freed them. It was they who freed you. Have they forgotten what I did for them? What you did for them. If you had not done for them what they did for you, you would not be here now, waiting your execution. I, I must have made a mistake. Somewhere I made a mistake. But where? Where? Oh, holy. My holy. Who is that, Maria? Come for you. Maria, hand me the pistol. What are you doing? Hand me the pistol. And again, you commanded your sick body and made it stand upright. And with superhuman strength, moved to the window and there saw your island empire crumble beneath you. The rebels, peasants, rising against you and suddenly... Somehow you remembered your mistake. You saw that what the people give, they can take away. You raised the pistol to your brow. And they say, here in this citadel, 3,000 feet above the sea, King Christoph walks at dawn when the mist comes up from the sea and breaks against the ramparts of the castle and moves it like clouds. just heard part two of Destination Freedom's dramatization of Black Hamlet, the story of King Henri Christophe of Haiti. Destination Freedom is written by Richard Durham, produced by Homer Heck, and directed by Dick Loughran. <laughs> Tony Parrish. Others in the cast were Fred Pinkard, Dean Olmquist, Weslin Tilden, George Kluge, and Stan Gordon. Special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and was played by Elwyn Owen and Roy Graham. Our technician was Al Johnson. Sound effects by Cliff Mueller. This is Charles Chan inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom presents Segregation Incorporated a special report of the National Committee on Segregation in the nation's capital. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.